Um, can you all hear me? I hope. So, um, my name is Maria Smarczestad. I work at IBM in Germany. I'm a very young IBMer since I just started working there last year for IBM standards. It's like very, very young. And um, when preparing this presentation about IBM Watson and the languages of Switzerland, which is our official title, I was still very concerned about not giving a marketing presentation and also not telling you stuff I'm not allowed to. So um, we'll see how that goes. Just bear with me just a few more minutes to lunch. I have actually three main points that I want to discuss today. The first one is, what is Watson? Um, we always come across so many misunderstandings about Watson, so I just want to give a quick overview without going into details. Then I want to quickly show you two of the newest Watson developments that we're working on right now that you can use as products as well. And then I want to put these two products also in relation with use cases and products, projects that we have in Switzerland and with Swiss languages. So the most common misunderstanding misunderstanding misunderstandings about Watson is that Watson is the, the system that won Jeopardy. That is not true anymore. That was that way a few years ago. So it's not anymore just a question answering system. It's actually a whole platform of products that contain different NLP components. We have, you can see, um, I don't really know which side to look on. You can see that we have, we split up the different products that we have in four areas, explore and analyze, engage, discover and develop. Explore and analyze is everything about text analytics. And then engage is more like talking through your phone, where there's actually an engagement between humans and Watson. The Discovery Advisor is a product that was developed specifically for the healthcare industry. So it's all about bringing many different data sources together and gain insights. And then lastly, and probably most, the most interesting one for this community is the Watson Developer Cloud, which is a new open source platform when you, where you can actually try out all the, all the Watson components. Today I want to present the Watson Knowledge Studio and the Watson Developer Cloud. The Watson Knowledge Studio is an annotation platform. So yes, we also have an annotation tool. <coughs> Um, what it does is a bit more complex than maybe any other annotation tool because it's, it, encompasses, it, it encompasses all the steps between planning your annotation task and writing your guidelines up to training your, your um, machine learning classifier. So it's an annotation tool that specializes on annotating relations, entities and co-reference mention, mentions for information extraction. So it also, it also includes uh, an automatic evaluation tool, for example, so you can do everything on the same platform. And the, the main goal is to make it as user-friendly as possible. So normally what we lack is subject matter expertise in healthcare or automotive industry, for example. So the goal is that the clients can actually annotate their own texts. So it is, that's why it was so important to create a user-friendly annotation interface as well. I'm just shortly going to show you a few screenshots. It's not about understanding the whole project, but just so you see what, what's possible. So on top you see all the steps that we have, where you start defining the type systems, what exactly do you want to annotate, what is important for the texts in your industry. And then you go further and upload your documents, set up annotation tasks. You can pre-annotate the documents with dictionaries or ontologies that you have. Then um, in the second last field you have the human annotation tool. And finally, um, the annotator component. What we call an annotator is actually a classifier model, maybe a normal NLP speech. Then we also have, as you can see, and I, I think I just mentioned this already, we annotate three things. We annotate entities, mentions, co-reference mentions of the same entities, and relation types. 
the, the tool supports both creating your type system in the tool, just creating it and testing it in there, or just importing it if you already have one you want to work with. Um, finally, it's also important to say that it's not just annotating and training, so we, we try to do it correctly and you set up a gold standard as well, which we, I think it's called ground truth here, so that you can directly evaluate and also um, calculate inter-annotator agreements, for example. So this might be the most interesting screenshot because this is what the annotation actually looks like. So when you have a text, you can see the, the blue and green fields are the entities and all the same colors, all the entities of the same colors belong to the same coreference chain. And then on top of that, you have the you have the arrows that are the, the relations between the entities. When the whole annotation is done and you're satisfied with the quality of your annotations, then you train the classifier <coughs> in the same tool as well, which just extracts features from your annotations. Uh, to come back to the languages, this is a very new product. It's actually just available since this month. So we have it in German already, and French and Italian, which is important for Switzerland, is coming, as well as a few other languages this year. So, I mean, I thought this as well at the beginning. Why is this tool different than any other annotation platform? I, in my opinion, the most important thing is that it's a, it is a tool for non-NLP, non-IT specialists. It's a tool for for a specialist of any industry who know their text, who know what has to be annotated, and then you can actually train an annotator yourself. Another uh, important thing is a machine learning component, which is integrated into the same tool. So there is actually, it's, it's an out of the box classifier training, which of course has advantages and disadvantages, but I'm not ex exaggerating when I say you can actually train your classifier with one click, which has advantages and disadvantages. So finally, um, as I said, since Watson is a whole platform of products, it's important to integrate the, the classifier models that result from this work into any other product, for example, into improving some text analytics use case or into a question answering system as well. So what do we do with the Watson Knowledge Studio in projects? This is about German, not Swiss German at the moment. So we have, for example, customers that analyze just feedback texts in social media, for example. For example, in the automotive industries of our car models, of our car dealers as well. And then a more uh, complex use case is that is analyzing drafts of contracts where you want to filter out weak words, expressions, which are things such as we should or that are not, not, very, not very good to have in a contract in the end. Another project that we had actually here in Switzerland was uh, with the police department of one of the cantons, um, where we analyzed all documents contained on confiscated hard disks. We did this for German, French, and Italian, and of course the outlook is to include all Swiss, Swiss languages, and Romance is one of them. So, if you are a Romance NLP specialist, <laughs> just know that we're interested in these languages as well. And another, another challenge for the future that came up is the support of multilingual documents as well. Okay, so now just shortly the Watson Developer Cloud. As I said in just a very short sentence, um, the platform is called Bluemix and the Watson Developer Cloud is just one part of it. So it's open source and it's a cloud-based platform that supports many programming languages. So if you want to try out uh, the Watson services, you can just log in and do so. So it's free at the beginning. I know normally when we say IBM products, you expect to, you have to pay two millions at least, but it's not, so you can just try out 
any Watson service that you have heard of. We have, you can see here, an overview of the most common Watson services that we have. Speech to text, text to speech, all the, the services from Alchemy API as well. Or a bit more complex, maybe personality insights that analyzes all the text from an author. You can, when you use Watson as Bluemix services, you can either have your own application and just choose what NLP component you need for your own application, or you can start from scratch and choose a, a boilerplate which already comes with sample code and everything that you need basically. So it's, it's very easy to start. So as an example, I want to show you um, the example of a conversational agent, because unlike Martin, we at IBM, we love talking to our phones. So, I mean, not me, but, you know, we'll, we love selling it anyway, so. Um, as you, you can see on the bottom left, and you can see it over here, that when you just, you just download the package that you need to the SDK for, for creating a conversational application, and you have at the bottom the two most important NLP components. One is the natural language classifier, and the other one is dialogue, so at the, at the, the very basics of any question answering application from IBM are natural, natural language classifier and dialogue. So natural language classifier, the name doesn't say very much, but it's a classifier that is specialized on short texts, especially questions, where you just you classify your, your questions and get the right answer for different question variations. And then the second part is the dialogue service, which is a, is a, a service where you can define how the conversation flow has to be. So you define which question is Watson going to ask, and what if, like depending on the type of answer, what possible follow-up questions can you ask. So you. So, so that you can create a more natural conversation flow. So that's uh, the goal of the dialogue service. And um, this exists for a few languages as well. German just coming up in a few days, and French and Italian already. And um, especially in everything that has to do with speech to text and text to speech technology, here in Switzerland, we have the big challenge, not only of Swiss dialects, but also of Swiss standard German, which is, people sometimes speak very differently from German people, and um, it is something that needs to be taken into account. As a few examples of Bluemix applications that you can just try yourself, but we're actually, um, we, we have built them a few times before, is for social media analytics where you use the, the services for sentiment analysis or for personality insights, for example. And then on the other hand, in the pharma industry, we use the uh, retrieve and rank service a lot, which is based on machine learning and just makes the research better and ranks the results in a better, in a better way. So as an outlook, again, for Swiss languages, we have a lot of use cases that would that they, they would like to have call center support or just any type of customer service basically where you can talk to Watson or any other conversational agent but of course since this is Switzerland people don't like to speak high German so it should be in Swiss German and um, so again if you're an NLP researcher and interested in Swiss German technologies just let us know as well. So in summary, um, just the link is the most important thing. Try it out. It's really for free. And um, well, we, we, we try to integrate as many languages as possible. And even though there is not always enough resources yet for every language, the future will be to add more and more languages as we go on. So that was it. I think we can go for lunch. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, I'm here all day.
short, which is great. Uh, everybody is looking for lunch. But maybe there are questions at the moment. Thanks very much for the talk. I was interested in uh, personality insights. So, uh, does uh, the Unix platform infer a personality uh, from emails and uh, on, from text in general? Is, uh, are the big five, uh, um, I mean, uh, is the big five theory uh, used? And uh, then if you could say something about uh, the cognitive insights as well, please. Cognitive insights, okay, so about personality insights, um, we do use the theory of the big five. We, I don't know exactly what, how we handle gender, for example, but there is actually an online game as well, so if, if you're interested, I, I can show it to you. You just, you need to have enough text from the same author and then it, it, it returns the characteristics. Like, it has a lot to do with, with sentiment analysis as well. About cognitive insights, I'm, it's very similar in personality insights, but it's not, it's not for, for a person or for an author. It's, it's based on if you have any, any collection of texts, for example, what insights can you get about, you know, not specifically about the author, but about the sentiment and the tone of the text as well, and how objective or subjective it is. Other questions? Hi, um, so in recent years many of the software packages have been published also by big companies. Um, is RBM planning on open sourcing some parts of Watson or will it remain closed? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering why Chinese never comes up in these language lists that you use for analysis, also in other talks. Um, well, it, it's a very practical question at the moment because our development team is partly in Japan, so we have a focus on Japanese first. And um, it is actually actually on our multilingual roadmap, but it's, it's still not. It's just a matter of practical issues. <laughs> Other questions? So thanks again, Laura.